So you're playing Skyrim Special Edition or Anniversary Edition and your load order is full. You're at or nearly at 254 plugins. You've already flagged every ESP as ESL that you can possibly flag. You may have even merged a few plugins to save space. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can still fit more. The process I'm talking about is compacting. This is a separate operation for merely flagging an ESP as ESL. It's taking a mod that's small enough to be an ESL, but was not built to be an ESL, and making it an ESL. First, quite a few things to consider before you do this. This is a semi-complex process of done right. Even if you follow all steps, there may still be problems with the mod after compacting. That's okay. Simply delete the mod using your mod manager and reinstall it. Do not perform this process after you already have a save game with the official version of the mod installed. This can brick your save game as it tries to load the original form IDs. You may want to hold off on opening your save games while you're messing around with form IDs anyway. Do not perform this process in Creation Kit. Xedit has several utilities that will make this process work much more smoothly. Most notably, if you have your whole load order open, it flows down form ID changes to other mods. I'm going to list all of our considerations, and then I'm going to cover them as we go through the process. First, does your mod have a BSA? What's the number of individual records in your mod? Does your mod contain a new cell? Does your mod contain face gen files or voice file? Is there an SEQ in your mod? Are there patches for your mod? Or does your mod have masters or is it a master to some other mod? Does your mod have a large number of scripts or DLLs? And does your mod have any external utilities? A good example is SPID. First, dummy check. Check in your mod manager if the plugin has already flagged DSL. That'll save you a lot of trouble. The new cell face gen and voice considerations are all handled by a script called ESPFE Follower, linked in the description. Download from Nexus Mods, then add the new script to exit it, and also add ESPFE Follower cell free. We'll probably need both of them. Next, go to the mod staging folder and just physically look at the files. Check your mod for a BSA file. If there's a BSA, use the extractor in the description and unpack the file into the mods folder, then delete the BSA. A BSA is a Bethesda archive file, like a zip file for their games. We have no way of modifying the files while it's still in archive form. Check your mod for scripts. PEX files are not human readable, so if your mod has source files, then we can look through them. What you're looking for is get form from file. If your mod has a lot of scripts, this can lead to a very long process or just an impossible task. But if you're willing to put in the work, look through each one of these source files. If your mod has git form from file, you won't be able to compact this mod with, without recompiling the script, and that can get pretty complicated. Next, check if your mod has any DLLs. Royal Armory doesn't have any, but I'm going to go to one that does to show what it looks like. DLLs are like scripts, but they're written in the programmer's own language outside of Skyrim's normal framework. If a mod has DLLs, full stop, do not compact this mod. On the bright side, a lot of DLL-based mods are SKSE plugins, which don't take up slots anyway, and there's no limit to them. Last, check to see if your mod has external utilities like INIs or distribution files. DAR is a good example of this because it has conditions files, but some of the other ones point to specific form IDs, which you'll most likely have to change manually if you compact. And now you're finally ready to open Xedit. Just to be safe, load your entire load order, including any patches for the mod. Find your mod and click on it. In the information pane under header, you'll see number of records. If this is less than 2048, continue on. Don't worry, Exit it will warn you if you tried the next step with too many records. Right click on your mod and select Compact Form IDs for ESL. If it is possible, Exit it will do this. Everything that's changed gets bolded. As you can see, Royal Armory has a patch and Exit it has automatically flowed down changes to that patch. Right click on the mod, 
apply script and run ESPFE follower. The script will copy and rename face gen texture and meshes and voice files, changing the old texture path to the new one. Then it'll set the ESL flag. The script won't work if there are any new cells added. Now that we know that there are new cells added, open up the mod cell record. You'll need to manually check every cell. If that cell isn't new, no problem, such as this. If the cell is new, and your mod is the only one affecting the cell, also no problem. Where we do run into a problem is in Skyrim Special Edition, there's a bug when an ESL creates a new interior cell record. If another plugin overrides it, then that cell doesn't load properly. Thankfully, most new cells created by mods don't have other mods overriding them, but in this case, our patch is overriding that PI test space. So this wouldn't normally be a good candidate for ESL. I could merge the two plugins and then probably compact normally. So if you do check the cells and everything's great, then run ESPFE follower cell free. As a bonus, these two scripts will set the ESL flag after they're done. So you don't have to do anything in your mod manager. Next, go back to your mod staging folder and determine if you have an SEQ file. If it has one, go back into XEdit, right click under other and click generate SEQ file and that's it. All that is, is a text file that lists start game enabled quests and this is by form ID so when we get done with compacting we have to regenerate the SEQ. Close it and save it. Now don't forget to check your external utilities and change to new form IDs if you need to. This can be tedious or can be easy depending on the mod. Alright, and the final step I would recommend if you followed all the actions above, there may still be something wrong with the mod. Load it up in game and do an acid test. If everything seems to be working, you're done. Congratulations. You're the proud owner of a new ESL flag DSP. Helpful trick for you. If you have a lot of plugins and you're not sure which ones can be compacted, there's a script that will tell you, included with XEdit, called Find ESP Plugins That Could Be Turned Into ESL. So, uh, best of luck in your modding. I want to hear truly insane numbers of mods. Tell me about it in the comments below.